So what's really wrong with Nestor Cortez? Okay. He's on the IL now. He's placed him on the IL. And you know, he's been replaced by Randy Vasquez, who's going to pitch in his space tonight. So and it's a 15-day IL. I personally think it's probably going to be longer because it's a shoulder problem. And shoulders tend to be a little bit more temperamental than a lot of other areas in the body. With the exception of an elbow like Tommy John and blah, blah, blah. But you don't really know. <clears throat> so this could be an extended stay, rehab, rebuild, and, and so on. So we just don't know yet. I do think there are two things that are main contributing factors that have led to this shoulder problem for Mr. Cortez. And Aaron Boone confirmed this as much as well that he's not recovering properly in between uh, starts it's the day after and so on. So he's obviously affected by a couple different things. Okay. And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the my two things, and I want to know what you think. A lot of the comments when we're done. And then I'll get back to my trade series. I've got five or six more scenes I'm going to be doing trade proposals with the Yankees. So. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. Take a look at the ones, ones I've already done in the description. Enjoy them. Now, regarding Tor Cortez, we get to the one thing is the change in baseball rules this year. Okay, We know that he was kind of a crafty pitcher. We tend to work fast the first couple pitches, and then they slowed down significantly towards the end of the bat, changing mechanics and, and doing some other things. Well, now he doesn't have the luxury of doing that. It's, it's a consistent pitch clock with every pitch. So he has to change his... Uh, his rhythm, his, you know, his, in, in, in a certain way, his mechanics, his repertoire. So, and I'm not exactly sure whether he's adapting well or, or just uh, whether it's working for him, whether it's benefiting him or not. So, but, you know, in, in one way, it's clearly not, obviously. So, and I hope that he gets better. But that's one of the things that I think is uh, a contributing factor. And the other part here, and I've talked about this last year, at nauseum because it's, it's one of the things I noticed and I monitored and I paid attention to it. So, and I talked about it after <clears throat> I initially brought it up, which is workload. Okay. I understand last year he, uh, it was basically him and Cole and Cole wasn't you know, characteristic Cole. So a little bit of extra lo workload and pressure was put on Nestor Cortez. He did more than he usually did and incredibly, and he did it admirably. So, <clears throat> and thankfully, because number three, four and five after that were, you know, you didn't even know what the three, four, and fives were. There was no consistency to them. Now he's a little bit different this year, but his workload, he went from 90 innings pitched in 2021 to 170 in 2022, and that's including the playoffs, okay? Um, that's an 80-inning workload. Generally, the rule of thumb as you're growing up and getting older and progressing through systems, uh, baseball folks recommend <clears throat> essentially capping out at about 40% of a workload, a 40% it's not me, a 40 innings pitch, I should say. So, you know, you if you go from 160 innings to 200 innings, that's a 20% workload. If you go from 120 to 160, a little bit different, 25%. Like if you go from 80 to 120, that's a 50% workload. So the percentage based on what you're doing factors in, in as well. And he doubled, again, he added 80 innings pitched in one season, which is doubled essentially the recommended volume by baseball folks for pitchers. And they do that to protect pitchers. And I remember, you know, you guys like Mike Mussina said, you know, pitchers should not throw off speed pitches until they're at least 18. And that's a growing up thing too. And I remember that because they used to play that role, that rule of thumb over in Elm Jack Little League where I played baseball too. So in Queens, New York, and they didn't want kids throwing curveballs and all that stuff. And I remember having a young kid having to get Tommy John surgery because he's throwing too much curveballs. So happens to kids too, which is <laughs> sucks. But I think the workload um, was way too much for Cortez, and he hasn't been able to uh, basically rebound and recover for it, even with a long offseason. Okay, maybe he had problems in the spring training too. Okay, I think that was a lower body, if I remember correctly, hamstring strain. But nevertheless, he's having physical problems all this year. And I think a lot of it's due to not only the increased workload, which is way more than people normally recommend for pitchers, with the combination of the game speed of the game changing, I mean, we've cut the you know the game lengths from basically three hours and ten minutes, like two hours and forty, or about a half an hour. Pitchers have to change their repertoire; they have to consistently work quickly. So, it's something that I you know I remember talking about this a lot, and I you know, and talking to other content creators, other channels about it, and so on. Uh, I, mean, I don't know if any of you folks remember it, but it's something that I I think is a is a factor here. So, and again, I hope. They make some adjustments. I mean, personally, for them, I would go try to let him go because you could see that you know, with two times through the lineup, 
the third time he deteriorates rapidly. So if you can get him two, three times, two times in the lineup, maybe be around the fifth inning or so. Um, and then you bring in a long relief guy. And another reason I said having three long relief guys is a very good idea for any team because they help bridge the gap from your starters to your power arms, your short relief power arms. And again, to me, it's a security blanket for either one. And I will be, it would be wise for them to load up on guys so you can throw multiple innings, the Matt Crooks of the world, the Clark Schmitz, if, you find, if he winds up not being in the rotation now. So and we don't know what's going to happen now. We really don't know how long Nestor Cortez is going to be out for. Hopefully it's not as long as he might be out for. So, But we'll see. You know, I feel like it'll be a lot better when, when Carlos Rodon comes back as well to give us another power arm in the, in, in, in the rotation. It looks like he's trending nicely towards his comeback and, and his return date. So I'm looking forward to that. We need Severino to rebound and be consistent. We need Garrett Cole to continue to do what he's doing. And Domingo Herman has been a very pleasant surprise. We need him to keep doing what he's doing too. But Nestor Cortez right now, uh, I think those are the two main factors that are affecting his not only pitching, but his physical um, his physical condition. So let me know what your thoughts are. Are you seeing anything else? Notice anything else? So I want to know what, what, what you think one way or the other. That's why I always ask every video. Give me your feedback. So whether you agree or not, it doesn't matter. Your, your, your opinions matter. So they're important. So, but yeah, let's, that's the Nestor Cortez. I'll get back to the trade proposals the uh, next video. A lot more coming. So you know what to do if you don't want to miss that. But have a great day, everybody. I'll talk to you next time.